Hey guys, welcome to the Improvement Podcast, where the mission is to help young men develop their character, identity, and mindset in order to activate their potential and achieve their goals in life. I'm your host, Kamani Randall, and in today's episode, we go into part three of my series with Scott Carson. We went over the assignment he gave me the week before, which was to add context to my personal values, and we also discussed developing the mindset of serving as a lighthouse to the people around us. Let's get to it. But yeah, um, whenever... I was working on that assignment that you gave me. Uh, one of my uh, one of my values that you told me to add some, uh, I guess, some context to is integrity. And so, just kind of reflecting on that and seeing why it was one of the uh, one of my values. It kind of goes along with what you were just saying, talking about how uh, being, I guess, that authentic person, you know, leads to you being able to to have that that trust. So, I guess, having integrity when it comes to being who you are and being in alignment with a certain type of way that you say that you're going to be people can put their trust to you knowing that that's what they can expect from you and if you don't have that if someone knows that you're wavering then uh they can never really have that full established bond with you i guess you could say the authentic bond just because they don't know what's real and what's fake they don't really know what to expect and i guess like an analogy that i kind of use and it's from a, a speech that i had memorized in college and it ended up being pretty pivotal in i guess my change when it came to my development was uh, there was the line from the speech that went be as true to a trust reposed as the needle to the pole. And pretty much what it means is that your morals, your standards and everything should be unwavering, like how a compass needle is unwavering. It always points north. And, and that's you know why we're the, the compass. But I, I can definitely see the importance of that because it's something that I've based my identity around. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like if your values are flippant, so are you. You know, and if you're not, one of the reasons why I asked you to go further into your values and to give it context is simply because the clearer you are, the stronger the compass. <laughs> right. You know, the less you will waver because you've, it's, you know, like if, <laughs> if, you're, on, if you're on a trip to, Dallas and you're driving down the road and you don't have a map, you can get there, but it's going to be a bit of a fluke, isn't it? Yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> but if you've got a map, it makes, makes it, it a little bit simpler, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, mm. and that's what it's about. You know, like it's like anything in life, you know, like it's not I don't, I don't think everything has to be planned like i keep hearing plan 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 sometimes you can't plan sometimes things just happen but i think if you live a valued life you get the opportunity to go back to your values and find out what you're in alignment with and they give you they give you strength in times that you really need it you know and it's yeah, so I'm looking forward to hearing your values today and where you went with that. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and take out my uh, my notebook and get started on that then. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Ah, uh, I mean, I'm feeling I'm feeling fine on a scale of maybe one to ten. I would say I'm feeling like a a five or a six. I'm pretty uh, pretty neutral. Not a a great day, but like nothing that's gone on to like make it bad. Just a normal day. But, you know, this this is, I guess, out of the normal. So this is, you know, kind of a boost talking through this, talking about this type of stuff, making sure I'm in, in alignment, doing uh, all the all the inner work. Right. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing, though, right? This is the work very few people do. Mm -hmm. This is the work that really puts you in your own heart so that you've got enough to give others. You know, like it's it's. I adore the fact that you've you've chosen to work on yourself and understand that in order for you to be involved with a woman in the relationship that you want, you have to be the best version of you. That's it in the story. If you're not working on you, you're not providing what you need to give to that woman. Right. And also I would say it even kind of goes outside of like romantic relationships, I'd even say family and friends. And one thing that I noticed from 
you know, my personal development journey is that, you know, the more you develop yourself, kind of like what you're saying, being the best version of yourself, the better it makes the experience of the people around you, you know, with you being in their life and you having the awareness and everything and the empathy and these other values uh, and adding that value to their life, being that type of person that they can say, you know, cares about them in this way and helps to meet these different needs that they might have. It just makes things better all around. Mm. Just on that, do you find that you support people more now because you live a valued life? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I would say uh, once I became more intentional about like building my my relationship skills, I would definitely say that I started to get much better results. And, you know, even just when I wasn't necessarily focused on relationships, but focused on being the best version of myself, I started to see better results. And I think it was from a few things. Uh, one thing about uh, doing personal development and really getting an idea of who you are from what I've noticed is that it makes you, it gives you more polarity. And one thing about polarity is that the people that really align with you are going to find you and the people that don't, they kind of get stripped away. And so due to the fact that I had a much more defined sense of self, I guess you could say the people that really appreciated those things were the ones that started to gravitate towards me more. And so uh, it was to, to the point to where I actually have bonds with the people who are in my life, as opposed to me just being someone that's kind of middle of the spectrum, I guess, non-abrasive uh, or inflammatory in any way, someone that doesn't have like defined, you know, ways that they live their life. I mean, you can make a lot of acquaintances, but it's rare that you can be this middle ground person and actually have real connections. And so that was one of the things that I noticed. And then developing the relationship skills and things. One thing I'll say about that is that looking at what I was lacking and what I felt like I needed and wasn't getting from people around me, it really brought my attention to how I wasn't providing that same thing to some of those people where, you know, so I might be struggling with something before I wasn't the type of person that would, I guess, you know, have the awareness to pick up on that and try and brainstorm and see how I could help. But being in spots where I felt like I needed that and didn't have somebody to do it for me, it showed me that importance of having that awareness. And so that's when I started looking out to uh, help people whenever I had the bandwidth uh, to do it emotionally. And so uh, I guess those are kind of two ways that, that I've looked at it. Yeah, and, uh, and without putting words in your mouth, how much fuller are you when you help other people? It feels good, yeah, because... Uh, the stuff that I'm learning, the stuff that I'm practicing, it's not just for me. I'm seeing it uh, providing value in other people's lives. And, you know, when they say thank you or they say this, this made a difference. And uh, I'm assuming when they pass it on to other people because they now see the importance of it, it kind of just makes it to where you live in a, a better community, you could say. So if I'm passing these um, this support to the people that are in my community around me, uh, it's most likely going to make everything in my small community better because they're going to reciprocate in some type of way, whether that's them being the be a better version of themselves or trying to return the favor, you know, in doing that same thing for someone else that they saw me do for them. And so it just makes everybody around you healthier and, and happier. Yeah, hundred percent. I, th I think <sighs> it's interesting, right? Because this, this, this journey called life, we're growing we're growing through and we're choosing to grow through i consider myself to be a lighthouse and you're becoming a lighthouse yourself Kamani. yeah we're like working on it <laughs> yeah you are you are like and but a lighthouse shines light out on the rocks and on the treacherous water for the boats to be able to navigate a lighthouse doesn't get in the boat and navigate the water he doesn't do anything other than shine the light on where the rough waters are. Because if he's in the boat navigating the waters, you can't see the rocks. But what a lighthouse needs is good fuel and a lot of it. A lighthouse needs to be working on themselves and growing and, and get that strength and make sure they've got a good power support, power supply. So that when they shine their light, it gives people the opportunity to be able to see the dangers ahead. Hmm. I like that. I like that analogy that you made and something that 
I'm guessing maybe this is what you in, intended when you were telling me is that uh, I think maybe that was a way of you saying that you don't have to like get involved in someone's issues to like help them get through them. Is that kind of what, what you're saying? 100%. You know, you just keep being you. Be the best version of you. If people come to you and ask you for help, you help them. You support them in, 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 in every way you possibly can. But you've got to have permission to do that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the line gets crossed. Because people with great intentions come in and help. Some people aren't ready for help. Some people haven't learned the lessons. Some people haven't, you know, they're trying to work it out themselves. There's great pride in working through a problem and coming out the other side on your own. Mm -hmm. So you must ask for permission. Hey, how you going with that? Is there anything you need right now? Anything I can do to support you? Rather than just going in and helping. <laughs> see that for me? Yeah. So, yeah, and I see what you're saying. And it's interesting, you know, like it's, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that probably the last, <sighs> we'll sit down and go through things on a world scale on the, on the last time we have a chat because there's opportunities here in what you're doing to be able to look at that and implement that in, in a global scale of, of what human existence is. Because as I was saying earlier, you know, we're a phenomenal time in life right now. We're challenging the way things are. The, the, and generational trauma is something that is, 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 is huge. And this is actually what we're working through right now. It's nobody's fault. It's just the way in which things were. We're, we're progressing as, a, as, a, as, a, um, uh, as human beings to the point where we're starting to understand emotional intelligence, the impact we have upon one another. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a new dawn in that area. You know, and love, love, is, love is going to conquer fear. But it starts with self-love and being the best version of you, which is a value-based value, value -based life based upon your values for you. And the best thing about values at any time in your life, you can revisit them because things change. You know, fatherhood, become a grandfather, change jobs learn new things you get the opportunity to grow and if i think it was muhammad ali uh, one of the one of the greatest things I, I just if you think the same way at 50 as you did when you're 20 that's a life wasted there's so many opportunities to grow and i and at the age of 44, <laughs> I know I think nothing like I did when I was 20, but I didn't, I didn't start that journey until I was 36 years old, mm -hmm. you know? So I can't wait to see what you create. Talking of which, let's get into your values. All right. Yeah. So first one is empathy and the context behind that is, uh, I feel like you must empathize to be able to understand people. And I think that understanding leads to better relationships and a better version of you because uh, you reflect their experiences on yourself. And I guess to kind of maybe give a story behind that, something that I felt like was lacking in my upbringing and, you know, a skill that I didn't really develop until later was having the ability to empathize. You know, something that was pretty common in my household was, you know, if you saw other people that might have been struggling with something that you didn't struggle with, you kind of looked at it as if you were better uh, than that person. And when you come from a place of superiority like that, it makes it to where you can't really, you know, I guess you don't really take a mode of understanding, if that makes sense. You don't look at that person to see why they're in their situation. You just look at it as if you're superior to them. And as a result, you never do uh, reflect or on, on yourself, I'll say, because one thing about it that I've noticed is that just by empathizing, you may not necessarily be able to relate to somebody's experience, but you can maybe try and understand why they got in that spot. And then looking at it from that perspective, you can kind of see how maybe, you know, based on your personal constraints that you know you have, how you could potentially be in a, in a similar situation. And so that's just something that at least I gathered from that. And that's why I think that empathy was important because 
that was one of the things that uh, led to me not having as fulfilling of relationships with with family, just because, you know, even family, we weren't able to empathize for each other. Okay, so can you start that again the, with the very first sentence? Sure. So I wrote that you must empathize to be able okay. to understand people. Okay. Are these your values? Are they other people's? I would say they're mine. Okay. So would you, what other word would you use other than you? Me? I? Read it, read it with that. I must empathize to understand. Does that feel different? Uh, I guess it's more so making it to where I'm really taking ownership of it as opposed to like I wrote a little paragraph or something, you know, like as like a an explanation, like for a for an assignment or something, right? It gives you a bit more clarity, right, on, on you yeah. and your, yeah. So I'll write I. I'll put an I in there. I must empathize to understand. It's probably a good thing to not generalize, but to put what, how it works for me. I must empathize to be able to understand. Mm -hmm. Understanding leads to me having better relationships in a, and creates a better version of me because I reflect on their experiences and you know apply them to my own. Read that again. So I must empathize to understand. Understanding leads to better relationships and a better version of me because I reflect their experiences on myself. How does that feel? Uh, it's, it's better. Yeah, it's, it's definitely better. It's, it, it sounds like you've empowered yourself a bit more that it's no one else's. It's, it's, it's yours. Yeah, taking ownership of it. I guess you could say making, making empathy my value because I'm framing it in a way to where I'm only worrying about it applying to me, not generalizing it, making it apply to anybody else. Because you are a lot house. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Next. Yeah, and then the, the next one was uh, integrity. And so this is essential for me to be able to build trust with others and for shaping the strong identity. Uh, nobody will trust a compass that wavers. If you don't, if I don't exercise integrity, uh, when I measure myself against those morals that I have, it's going to lead to delusion. And uh, after that, if you're delusional, you can't have a, a strong identity because the mark, the mark moves. Can you read that again? Yes. So integrity is essential for building trust with others and for shaping a strong identity. Nobody will trust a compass that wavers. If I don't exercise integrity, when I measure myself against my morals, it's going to lead to delusion. And if you don't have, and as a result, you won't have a strong, well, I won't have a strong identity if I'm wavering and not exercising integrity when I'm measuring myself against my, my principles and morals. So when I'm sitting here thinking, processed, integrity is great. And the way in which you've expanded it is awesome. But I feel there's a bit of you. You're going through a situation situation's really difficult. You're not sure whether or not you're going to get through this situation. Breathe it again. Okay. So integrity is essential for building trust with others and for shaping a strong identity. Nobody will trust a compass that wavers. If I don't exercise integrity, when I measure myself against my morals, it's going to lead to delusion. And as a result, I can't have a strong identity. And so you said, I'm going through 
a tough situation. Yeah. And so what are the things you need to do to hold up your integrity? Uh, well, the way I kind of look at it is that for me to hold up to it, I need to actually know what the marks are that I need to meet. I need to know what my standards are for one. And then I just need to exercise the, uh, the discipline and devotion to those principles to stick by them, uh, despite what the circumstances may be. Okay. So that or else I'm not being true to, to myself or who I want to be, to what I want my identity to be. Yeah. And this is perfect because this is, that's, that's more guidance. Your values are here to give you guidance in tough situations so that you can go into integrity. The part for me that sort of threw me off a bit was when you said you'd be delusional. Well, you wouldn't be because you're in the moment and it's what's going on. So you have to define your integrity to give you the strength in your values. Does that make sense? Could you, could you reframe that? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you actually send that to me written so I can actually play with it. Cause I'll get lost on a couple of words when you're saying it, because as soon as I hear you say delusional, it takes away, it, it puts, it takes away the strength of it for me. I mm -hmm. think you could be stronger in your in your value there. I think because it's a great value and and it means a lot to you, which is awesome. But I think it is it can be it can be worded in a way which gives you more strength, and it's more for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Okay. So, to the, so the idea with your values is to continually give you strength. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't need to be big. Sometimes, and <laughs> some of the best parts is to define your values. You can go all the way out here, and then you slowly bring it back in, and you, you purpose it, purpose it, purpose it, till you get to the point where it is so strong in you that that's where it is. Trust. I trust that I only ever get given a situation that I can handle. Mm -hmm. it's mine i can handle this bang i can handle this <laughs> you know the impact <laughs> all right i got this <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and and it's and it's and it's that definitive definition that gives it strength so i'm going to ask you to read it again i'm going to try and try i'm going to try and pinpoint it or I think I, I think I understand what you're saying. I think I understand what you're pointing out. And to, uh, yeah. I guess maybe to elaborate on like what my frame of mind was and I wrote that down is I look at it like this. If I'm not exercising integrity, if it, integrity, if I'm not being honest with myself when it comes to um, seeing how I measure up to my morals, if I'm trying to make excuses for myself or um, kind of try and find little loopholes to try and let's say, you know, that I'm still falling within what my principles and morals are, even though some actions that I took uh, probably didn't, then that's what I was saying is is delusional. What, I, what I'm saying is that it's, I, I'm not really upholding those values and I'm trying to find ways to still keep my ego and that identity intact, even though I'm not actually taking actions that that align with it, yep. if, so, that, if that makes that sense. Yeah, it does, you know, like, and you've gone to situational things that have given you the opportunity to show why integrity is so important to you, right? So, but just then I heard, you know, integrity. Am I honest with myself? Am, do you know what I mean? Like, get into, get into that question of, of, of am i in alignment with integrity am i honest with myself integrity means i'm honest with myself am i you know giving you you power behind the behind integrity not the reasons as to why because i sort of feel like and correct me if i'm wrong when you're talking about integrity you're implementing in parts parts of your life where you could have done better where you were at a point in life that you made decisions that 
weren't right and that's integrity is important because it's there am i am i am i right in that or i would say that the first thing that comes to mind when i really think of why that's supposed to be pivotal in my identity why it's so important is actually from what i saw somebody else do uh where you know i guess i don't really need to say who but uh they took actions that were obviously against what they had presented their their morals and values to be but the thing about it was that they made an excuse by spinning the situation in a way to where it seemed like uh it's still aligned when it really didn't i think that's it's kind of hard to to really put it into into words but they kind of moved the bar i guess you could say to make it to where it still seemed like it was it was in alignment or it had to be done uh when maturity taught me that it, it really didn't and they just only wanted to exercise those principles that they claimed they had whenever it was it was convenient for them and to save face they i guess you could say kind of gaslighted or kind of reframed postured the situation in a way that made it seem like what they did was actually more moral or, or i guess the better decision and what the actual right decision would have been what a, what a gift that is that it actually is becoming part of your values that the, the pain that it put you in, the pain that that situation gave you is actually giving you one of the, your greatest gifts. It's something that becomes so important to you. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess you could, when you put it that way, you know, I guess it is a good thing that uh, instead of picking up on that bad habit or I guess not keeping that bad habit, you know, it's something that resonated with me enough to where I said, I don't want to do the same thing uh, going forward in my yeah. life i wanted to take full accountability and you know if it's it's a if it's a value that i'm not going to exercise it is not going to be one of my values i'm not going to pretend and have that misalignment in my identity oh look i love i love it when someone does something that's you know it triggers you really triggers you because it's like oh geez that hurts <laughs> what is it about that that hurts <laughs> if you take ownership and you take responsibility for that and you know that's that's growth that's 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 some exciting times i reckon oh, that's <laughs> I, I do enjoy it okay so integrity and i'm not like I, I love it i love it do you feel that you could reword that probably i'm sure if i sat down again and, and thought about it again i could probably make it a little bit more concise and, and yeah. better so and here's the thing making it concise and stronger think of lighthouse i need to stand tall i need to stand strong i need to shine light mm -hmm. yep so that then when in the moment that's what it is it's about you i i okay i just made a note for that so i'll yeah, make cool. sure to keep that in mind when i do it again yeah because it's you all right next all right um next value is self-mastery and so i think the purpose of of life for the most part is to become the best version of uh, of myself so that i can offer the most value that i can to my community and so the harder i work to activate my full potential the happier my peers and i will be and so that's why i think that self-mastery is important i feel like if everybody took that same type of approach we'd live in a in a much better world and so that's the philosophy I, I subscribe to and that's why it's one of my values brilliant love it oh, i'm with you i think it's awesome yeah self-mastery is something that no one ever gets to see life through your eyes and the you so it's so important to master you <laughs> yeah so I, I love it so what's going to keep you in alignment with self-mastery uh really just um i would say doing the podcast is um kept me in alignment with that because to be able to you know have people come on to the show and talk about different topics i need to work on those topics myself and uh you know for me to preach things and you know tell people about the importance of them i have to implement them the thing is 
I'm I'm also having to kind of learn this stuff before I teach it too. And so it's in a way it's holding me accountable, you know, kind of same reason why we're doing this now. Yeah. You know, I, I preached uh, people uh, being okay with vulnerability you know, being truthful and, and open uh, when it comes to their life experiences and things. And that being something that's needed to move forward. And so that was something that I needed to do myself fully, you know, even though I had been honest with myself behind closed doors and open about it, you know, I can't have people coming on the show, telling their stories and people knowing more about the guests and their, uh, in their path than they know about mine. So, you know, I feel like by me doing this process and sharing my full story and being completely open and candid, it kind of, uh, I, I guess it kind of shows more of the value that can come from the content. 100%. It gives more credibility. Mm. Yep. Sorry. Second notes. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. So what's next? Yeah, next one is uh, devotion. And so I must maintain a strong commitment to the way that I choose to live my life. Maintaining alignment between my actions and ideals will get me the results that I want. And I should do this despite outside opinions or norms. Read that again. I must maintain a strong commitment to the way that I choose to live my life. Maintaining alignment between my actions and ideals will get me the results I want. I should do this despite outside opinions or norms. Do you feel st real strength? I, I, it sounds like it's stronger. That feel, feel stronger. Yeah, that one, like, I, uh, that it already had, like, the eyes in it, you know, like, me taking yeah. ownership of it. So maybe that's why, because I, I wrote it, you know, in, I guess, in, in first person, as opposed yeah. to just, like, writing it, like, in, in second person or, like, just in general. So maybe that's why I came across as uh is more powerful. Hmm. Cool. Next. All right. And uh, the last one is independence. And so I will only depend on others when I want to, not because I have to. Uh, I should be self-sufficient in all areas and not give other people power over areas of my life just because I haven't put in the work to control those areas myself. Again, please. I'll only depend on others when I want to, not because I have to. I should be self-sufficient in all areas and not give other people power over areas of my life just because I haven't put in the work to control those areas myself. There's a lot of power in that. How does it feel? Um, that's definitely one of the ones that's like a little bit more, uh, I guess it at least it's more like a visceral response just because I could think of um, multiple examples of, you know, how that affected the trajectory of my life, you know, and different bad experiences that I had being dependent on others, you know, either due to irresponsibility or to being young and, you know, how much you have to compromise yourself or, you know, how much of your situation you don't have control of because of those things. And part of it that I thought was important to add was that uh, I only depend on others when I want to, because the thing is, I don't feel like anybody should go through life alone. But I'll, at the same time, you should never be in a spot to where you have no choice but to depend on somebody for something. It's it keeps you in power whenever you surrender i guess that control over a certain aspect to someone that you trust and you can go through and do your due diligence to make sure that they're worthy of having that trust as opposed to you being in a spot of desperation and not having a choice but to give it to that person that happens to be available who might not be deserving of that type of control over an aspect in your life and it kind of makes me think about about marriage you know eventually when when i get married i'm gonna have to surrender myself in a certain type of way to, to my wife, you know, to a certain degree. 
And the thing is, I'm doing that by choice. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, because like, I, I like can't do it myself. Like, let's say, you know, I, I need her help when it comes to, you know, holding me accountable and, and that sort of thing. Of course, I have the ability to hold myself accountable with different things, but I'm giving her the power to give me assistance with that because I know it's something I could use help with as opposed to just me having no self-control at all and depending on my future wife to hold me accountable for literally everything that I do. Hmm. I'm going to be interested in hearing these again once you're married. <laughs> Because the the and and they do change, mm -hmm. you know. If you go from uh, an independent person to a, to a, to a codependent, where you you really are dependent on each other for, and that's the, that's a really beautiful thing, because it's it's a unity, right? Right. And and, and the, the unity is, is it's amazing. Hmm. I think this would be good for you to watch back. Okay. Yeah. Because you're, you you'll hear it and you'll see it and you'll, because you're, you're a very concise man. You're very meticulous in making sure you get things right. You're very meticulous in making sure that you do your best consistently. And so when I watch it again, mm. uh, is there something specific that you caught that I should look for whenever I'm, I'm listening to it? Just you. Just you. Just listen to you and then listen to the way you present them so that you can feel you yeah like it's there's zero wrong and, and this is very much him improvement right here you've got somebody else listening to you work through things and i'm trying to understand you and get give you more power in your own statements because mm -hmm. they are your statements So it's about I. Okay. So yeah, when I listen to it again, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Just yeah. to be more aware of how I'm presenting the information and everything, and maybe try and take some insights from you know the different words I used or how I may have phrased different yeah, things in, just, in the conversation. Yeah, I mean you're well and truly intelligent enough to understand that it's you know if you'll be thinking about that lighthouse, <laughs> right, right. You know that, that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty strong analogy, isn't it? It stands out and it just holds you, you know, like and it's. I think that's really cool. And if anybody's ever, is watching this, there's no right and wrong to this. It's about what's best for you, and only you. That's the key, you know, and, and I, I, I love that. But the one thing I, I love most commanding is the fact that you're, you're free to be challenged. You're free to be and take on that information. It's not an insult. It's a, okay, maybe this could be tweaked. Okay. Maybe this, have you looked at this? Okay. What have you thought about this? How does it feel? Because your values have to feel the strength you have to feel them and then the, and once you feel them you're beyond the brain right so you go you go think feel no yeah so once you get past the thinking into here oh geez they stick <laughs> geez they stick so man have you got any questions for me on this uh right now no i'm just thinking of the uh of the assignment that you gave. And also just thinking about that, the comment you just made about 
I guess being receptive to uh, to criticism, I guess that's the way uh, that that I could put it. Uh, I, that's something I think is important because if you have a closed mind, especially when you consider yourself to be a learner, uh, you don't really have room in your mind to take on anything that might be better. Because you know, even going back to what you said before, doing what works for you, but there's not just one way that that can work. You know, you might find some type of uh, methods or ideology that ends up being better for you. And since there are all these different ways you could go about it. And so it'd be crazy for me, you know, especially preaching personal development and all that to preach closed mindedness, I guess you could say, to preach to people to not be the type of person that could be willing to uh, listen to all alternate viewpoints or something like that, or to be able to take criticism to improve upon what they're doing. Mm. <laughs> And it's funny, we live in a society where we're told things consistently. Well, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, do this, do this. And that's actually lost its value. Because we live in a world where there's so much information and a lot of it is all sales tactics. They're constantly being sold. So people are tired of being told things. They want people to live a valued life that our actions and our actions should be supported by our words, not the other way around. And our actions speak for us, and then we use our words to give our actions strength. And I think you're doing a great job of that, Kamani. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate it. That's, I mean, that's good to hear that you know, it looks like I'm moving in alignment, that um, I guess walking the talk. Hmm. progress and that's all you can ask you know what does practice make per well permanent yeah, that's what they i used to hear they used to say it makes perfect but someone said a better way to look at it is that it makes permanent because wherever you practice that's going to be what you do whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing can i challenge that sure and that practice makes progress oh well yeah <laughs> hmm. That's it. That's all it does. Makes progress. Beyond that, per, like if permanent, it's pretty head steadfast. That's what's done. Perfection, I don't believe exists. I think we can improve everything consistently. You know, it's it's just I, I hmm. you know, who taught me that? Who? My six year old boy. My son, six year old. Come on, buddy. Practice makes perfect. No, Dad. Practice makes progress. I'm like, ooh. Oh, that, ooh. That's a good one. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? He has a sword on the wall at school. I'm like, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Because it does. You guys just keep, keep making progress. So, talking of which, we, we are at 50 minutes. I am... Um, I think we should leave it here today. I think I think today's good. I think we'll we'll, we'll, move, we'll move into family same time next week. Actually, we we'll actually lock this time in now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can check to to make sure because technically, I guess you could say this is like during my work day, but I just didn't have oh, anything to do like around this this chunk of time. So I knew since yeah. I was going to be gone the whole weekend, I would try and just slide this in on on the Friday for me. So yeah, I can yeah. I can check my schedule to make sure that the same time works next week. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Because then I do want to open up a little bit about family and. But I just can I ask you this question? Sure. We started by sharing a bit about you. We started working through that. We analyzed that, and now we're going into your values. And you, you're getting clearer on your values. Does it, do you feel you're getting clearer? Um, I would definitely say that having to talk through them and have them challenged uh, gives me um, a better understanding of what exactly they mean to me. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would say so. Do you feel there's less pain in around the situations that you've been through because your values are becoming clearer. 
sit with that. Don't answer it. Could you repeat it one more time? Do you feel that the painful situations in your life aren't as painful when you're focused on your values? Just sit with that, don't answer it. Hmm. I'm really enjoying learning you at the American learning. That's good. I, want I mean, thank, <laughs> well, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it helps me too. So, hmm.